everyone, it is I, Julian Greystoke. I am wearing my Princess Mononoke shirt. Today, as we talk about a fantasy book that has Japanese and Chinese inspirations, that book is Iona. I found it on a list of books that are similar to Tamara Pierce books, and yeah, it really quite is. Also, according to Goodreads, Tamara Pierce really liked this one, so I was super excited to read it. There were gonna be dragons, a girl disguised as a boy. I was ready. Wow, this book was all over the place for me. My emotions really did the roller coaster. Not because it was a deeply emotional book, but because it was a flawed, flawed book. There were still things that I did like about it, enough to give it three stars on Goodreads, but I was hoping to be able to give it five. This book has a very slow pace and is definitely more of a political type of story than it is an action story. It differs a lot from Pierce in that way because her stories are usually a lot more active. Let's just talk about the main character of Iona or Eon right away. Iona is disguised as a boy and has been for a very long time in their society so that she can become a dragon eye, which is someone who can communicate with one of the 12 spirit dragons, and she finds out that she has the power to communicate with the mirror dragon, a lost dragon. I'm gonna call her Iona because that is the name that she eventually, like, goes with. She makes every possible bad decision. Every single one. It is maddening. If there is a bad decision to be made, Iona will make it. Ah, oh. hmm. Everything bad that happens in this book, like the fall of the kingdom, can be traced back to Iona making the worst decisions at every turn. Now it is in character for her, but it is exhausting as a reader. Lady Dila, I believe is how you pronounce her name, and her bodyguard, Raiko, are my babies, and I love them. Those two characters single-handedly saved this book for me. Anytime that they were there, I was like, yes. My beautiful children, I love you so freaking much. Like, and if, if anybody tried to hurt them, I went all mama bear and I was like, oh no, 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 you do not touch these characters. The Eastern mythology that was used in this book was a nice change from what we're used to with a lot of Western mythology. However, I'm pretty sure that the author is Australian and I don't think she is of Eastern descent. I meant to research this before I actually did this review. And as usual, I have failed. My internet is down again. So I would have to ask someone who is more familiar with those mythologies and that culture to know if she did a good job. So if you do know that and you have read this book, please comment below and let me know how the author did because I have very limited knowledge of like Eastern mythology and culture and whatnot. Speaking of own voices, there are trans characters in this story and I don't think that the author is trans. However, I felt that the trans characters were quite well done and there was a very interesting discussion of gender throughout this book. So I feel like if you especially are a trans person, maybe check out Eon and see what you think. Report back to me, comment below. There is an odd topic brought up with Iona's gender because she often says that she prefers to be a boy, but it is more because in society women are treated very, very poorly than it necessarily is that she feels that she is a boy. And that's, it's, it's a fine line to walk and I'm not sure the book does it completely well. In the end, it does feel a little bit like Iona is forced back into being a girl when she wanted to be a boy, and I'm I'm not 100% certain how I feel about that. There are also disabled characters in this story, yes! Oftentimes when you have a lot of things like trans characters, disabled characters, strong female characters in a book, it can sometimes feel like the author is just ticking off checkboxes, and I will say that that did not feel like the case. In the end of the story, Iona's physical disability is magically cured. That's not great. And I'm really, I'm really not a fan of it. 
There was a frustrating theme towards the end of this book, which was the theme of kindness and forgiveness being linked to womanhood. Anybody can be kind and forgiving. I'm not a big fan of it culturally being linked to femininity, first of all, because women can be dicks and also we can be badasses and kick all of the ass if we want to, and men can be kind and forgiving. So this linking of a kind, forgiving option because Iona is female is frustrating. The bad guy in this story did not impress me. There are kind of two bad guys, one we don't even really get to see, who is the evil uncle coming to overthrow the throne. He's just, he's Uncle Scar. I don't... But there is another dragon eye who is the main villain and he is just so cliched and evil. I kept waiting for depth from him. It never came. He gets super rapey because we can't have a villain without him trying to rape somebody. As I talked about in my video about writing rape into your story, using it to show that someone is evil is not a good reason to put rape in your story. A rape never happens, but there is definitely implications that he is going to rape Yona if he isn't interrupted, which happens. I will say that there is no romance story in this first book, which was nice and refreshing. There is a little bit of a... Uh, kind of relationship between Iona and her master character. And master as in he taught her, although he is also the person who like owns her indenture contract, so it's master in a couple of ways. And there is a, a relationship between them that is a little bit cringy. A little bit cringy. The writing overall in this book was pretty engaging. It did feel a lot like Tamara Pierce's writing. Oh, like a lot. In fact, I often forgot that I wasn't reading a Tamara Pierce book, and I kept trying to like figure out how this fit into her like world. Have you read Eon? What did you think about it? Leave a comment below and let me know. I will be reading Iona, so I will be doing a review about that eventually. I know it takes my reviews a while to get out there. Although if you want my initial shorter reviews, check out my Goodreads. We can be friends. It'll be great. Along with my Goodreads, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all kinds of places. All the links are in the doobly-doo. And of course, I create new videos here Mondays and Fridays. And I hope to see you all next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye!